Hello and uh, welcome to 5 Tech. In today's lesson, we are going to talk about uh, a service under compute which is called as EC2. EC2 in the sense it stands for Elastic Compute Cloud. And Elastic Compute Cloud is nothing but a particular service where uh, you get resizable cloud hosting services. Uh, please try to understand in a very simple manner. It is basically a virtual server which is called as instance in the language of Amazon where you can configure rent computers subject to your requirement. So you have seven important steps before a complete instance is launched. You got to choose an AMI where everything is configured here which stands for Amazon machine image. Then the type of instance that you need then you have certain details that you need to fill in just like a form which is very easy uh, that particular window you uh, we will be going there and see then uh, you got to add the storage storage is whatever is your requirement you need to uh, choose the storage size and you got to name it that is tagging and security group group which is a very important uh, factor in this and before uh, you can launch before you can launch you can review all the details in case if you want to edit, we have an option there where you edit and then launch the instance. So uh, EC2, there are different instance uh, types which, which has wide selection of uh, instance types uh, optimized to fit uh, different use cases like varying combinations of CPU, memory, storage and networking capacity. This is one of the most uh, flexible facility that you get from Amazon. Now coming to the important uh, aspect the way you choose different type of servers for different uh, purpose in the on the hardware side so out here on virtual from Amazon you get different types of option you have general purpose uh, instance you have compute optimized instance memory uh, optimized instance accelerated computing instance then storage optimized instance uh, here uh, you have 750 hours free a month and always remember stay within the free tier use only EC2 micro instances if it's free otherwise uh, costing other uh, um, everything is displayed out on the Amazon board uh, whatever the price is and you can proceed subject to your requirement are there any benefits yes of course there are benefits you have uh, elasticity is one of the best thing as in when you need you can grow and um, uh, if you don't need uh, your instances then you can always come down. It's under your control. You can uh, move with your requirement up or down. You can move any kind of facility in that. Of course, it's flexible. It's integrated, reliable, and secure. It's not that expensive if you see the uh, pricing part. And it's very easy to start. It's just click, click, and the best part of a click is you don't have to just click blindly. There are uh, options. There are if you text given what exactly you're click on, clicking on, then it's uh, easy to start. Under general purpose, you have these number of instances. You have D2 instance, M5, M4, M3. Then under compute, you have C5 instance, C4, and C3 instance. Then under memory optimized instance, you have X1E instance, X1 instance, R4 instance, and R3 instance. Accelerated computing, you have P3 instance, P2 instance, G3 instance and F1 instance. So this is what we have uh, uh, basics of uh, theory for you guys to understand. Let's see how to launch an instance. Now in this dashboard on the Amazon Web Services, you have compute as a service. Under that service you have EC2 which stands for Elastic Compute Cloud. Okay, then you can see uh, here instance uh, running instances it shows zero so very first thing is we click on to launch an instance means now i'm going to launch a virtual server which you can see uh, uh clear right up here to start using amazon ec2 you will want to launch a virtual server which we call it as instance so i say i'm going to launch an instance uh in the previous slide i had spoken about spoken about amazon machine image what is this? A template that contains the software configuration. You have OS, application server, applications required for you to launch the instance. So if you are under a free tier, fine, go for free tier. Then I choose Amazon 
Linux. Okay. Step two, I say choose an instance instance type. So provides a wide selection of instance types optimized to its different use cases. As I said, subject to your requirement. So since I'm taking a free, I say general purpose. T two is tier two, free tier eligible. Then I click on my configure instance details. Very first thing here you see is one. I can launch. I can write two. I can write three. I can write four. So initially I'll go with launching two uh, instances. The uh, most amazing part of Amazon is the beauty of Amazon. You don't have to click here and there or write help. Just drag the cursor to this point. You get the write up and you read. You can choose to launch more than one instance, whatever it is. Purchase options. You just take out here. Then about talking about networking, which comes under a VPC, that is Virtual Private Cloud, where your instances are parked. You have a subnet. Of course, it's all pre-configured. Public IP, you just get it automatically. You don't have to worry about, or you don't have to allocate a public IP. Then you have options under shutdown. Either you take stop or terminate. Most important part, please don't forget to uh, enable uh, this particular thing. Enable termination protection. What, is, what does this mean? In case if somebody tries to terminate the instance, uh, it, it, would, it won't terminate. It uh, has to be disabled out here. Only uh, disabled, only then you can proceed. Okay. So we chose this. Then just say add storage, which is very important part. Volume type is root. See, your instance will be launched with the following storage device setting. That is EBS. Let's come to it. A root. Then out here you have slash dev. Slash dev is a devices directory, which we learn in Linux. And uh, it, if you want to configure any device, uh, you got to go through slash dev directory. And A, you see, it's a first uh, disk, D for disk, V for virtual. This is a snapshot, which is uh, a facility out here. Then I say, I go, I go with 10 GB of storage. And remember, general purpose SSD is solid state drive, which is best for read and write purpose and excellent for IOPS. Okay. Then I say, I want to add tags, which I'm going to name it. I click here. I say N A M E. I say five tech. Okay. Then coming to security group. See a security group. It is a set of firewall rules that control the traffic for your instance. So I say SSH. SSH guys, you need to understand it's a secured shell. Secured shell in the sense you uh, when your data travels from origin to destination, it's totally encrypted. And here we use TCP transmission control protocol port number 22 and out here you see 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 slash and 0 that means allows all IP addresses to access your instance okay then I add a rule let me say I'm going ahead with HTTPS that is hypertext transmission control protocol secure or H and HTTP okay I say review and I say launch Remember, if I choose this key, which is displayed here, if I acknowledge, I can go ahead, but always as a starter, create a new key and learn the process. I say, I say new key 1211, uh, 12, 14, and 72. This is the number which along with the key I've given. You got to remember and I download the key. Once my key gets downloaded, meanwhile, now I launch the instance. So my instance is getting launched. These are the IDs of both the instances that I have launched. I click on this. It takes me to the uh, page where I see my instances are getting launched because I chose two instances. So this is my instance ID. It says state. That is instant state is pending in the sense out here you see it's pending here it shows pending here too the moment it says running it, it, it will show the same thing out here so i choose 2t which is a t2 sorry uh, that is tier 2 micro then uh, you have availability zone that is where your instance is see guys here it says running now and this is running too uh, then i uh, move here you can see here 
security group and remember availability zone that is us east that is us east 2c and key pair i said new key 1214 and 72 okay this is the owner okay here you see a public ip which is very important i, I just copy the public ip and this is my private dns and this is my virtual private virtual private cloud id and this is my subnet id this is my email now i go back here and i click on protege you remember the key we had downloaded the key name is new key uh, 12 14 72 i click on this i say load the key then out here just see all files then i say new key here just double click on this it takes you just say okay and save the private key remember it converts from pen format to uh, ppk format pen stands for that is uh, uh, privacy enhanced mail which converts to public private uh, key okay let me see okay save so, okay my key is saved let me check again the key is saved so i can do this i just go here and i click on this i just see can you see pem here pem guys it's written pem here this is a format can you see the key uh, how does the key look like just a plain page just look at how it converts now i'm changing it to ppk i say save it and i say save this private key my job is done this is how you can see it was just like a plain page now with like something with a cat you know so this has converted into privacy enhanced mail to public private key and i close this now i want to log in remember for remote login we use putty uh, out here uh, we copy the public ip remember this is a public ip which i copied and i paste the uh, public ip and here I enable SSH, click on auth and I pick up the key. I just double click on the key and I say open. So um, after uh, we uh, paste the public IP into the putty, this is the message we get. And this, of course, we're logging into it. Now, out here you see a dollar symbol. Dollar means non root user. So, how do I become a root user? This is how. Hash means a root user. Now, I say yum install HTTP D. Okay, I'm using hypertext transmission protocol D means DB. D means the services which run in the background and it installs this particular package and I say yes. After this, you need to start this particular service, uh, a particular service. Say service HTTPD start. Yes, you want to check the status of the particular service you server you see out here you see it's active and running then you go back to this page you see the browser please play the uh, paste the public ip and if server is working yes of course it says this is a test page and your server is working uh, thank you very much guys kindly uh, subscribe to my channel i hope uh, Things were informative and a few more. Thank you very much.